Questions, questions orales de nos rappeurs, chef de l'opposition. Lorsque les consommateurs de gros bon sens... When the common sense conservatives fight to fix the budget, stop the crime, and everything else we're doing, this government just continues with its corruption. We have learned that the RCMP is investigating a RIVE scam. The police force has revealed that the Liberals stopped the police from accessing documents in the SNC-Lavalin affair. Will this government waive cabinet confidentiality so that the police can get all the facts it needs for this criminal inquiry, the right honorable prime minister? Mr. Speaker, this situation is unacceptable, and that's why the authorities are closely examining this procurement process. Anyone who took advantage of our COVID approach to save Canadians should face the consequences. If they abuse the system, there will be consequences based on what the authorities find. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. That is a non-answer, and it shows once again that this Prime Minister is not worth the cost or the corruption. The question was whether he would allow the RCMP to see cabinet documents. We know that during the other criminal inquiry on one of this Liberal Prime Minister's scandal, he prevented the police from seeing all the documents. I'm speaking about the SNC-Lavalin scandal. Once again, if he really has nothing to hide, will he give all documents, including cabinet documents, to the police? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we can see how much this opposition leader loves personal attacks when he dredges up issues that were completely settled four years ago. We take the Arrive Can issue very seriously. That is why the authorities are carrying out responsible inquiries. And there will be consequences for anyone who took advantage of a situation where we are all trying to help Canadians through a global pandemic. Chef de l'opposition. While conserv common sense conservatives fight to axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime, this prime minister is not worth the cost or corruption. We found yesterday that he, his government is under RCMP investigation again, uh, this time for a RIVE scam. The commissioner of the RCMP revealed, however, that the last time they were investigating him for criminal activity, he blocked them in the SNC-Lavalin affair from getting cabinet documents. So will he lift cabinet confidentiality and hand, hand over all the documents to the police so that they can investigate any of his potential crimes? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the situation around Arrive Can is obviously unacceptable, which is why authorities are looking into this procurement process. And anyone who took advantage of everything we were doing to try and keep people safe during COVID uh, to get rich uh, will face consequences. That's the way our system works. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. But that's not the, system, the way the system has worked since he took office eight years ago. According to the RCMP Commissioner, he not only refused to be questioned in the SNC-Lavalin criminal investigation uh, and in the Aga Khan Billionaire Island investigation, but he blocked key cabinet documents from being included in those investigations. We now know that an app that was supposed to cost $80,000 went up to $60 million after the NDP helpfully voted for those extra funds. We don't know who criminally benefited from that. So once again, will the Prime Minister waive cabinet confidentiality, turn over all the documents, yes or no? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Leader, the opposition is digging into the past to try and bring up things that were settled many years ago. But if he really wants to talk about the past, uh, he should talk about the fact that the Conservative leader was at Transport Canada working hand in hand with the Minister as the founders of the company involved in uh, Arrive Can uh, were getting millions of dollars in contracts from the department he was working for. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we are taking seriously any concerns around procurement. The authorities are looking into it. There will be consequences for anyone who took care of our COVID protection efforts to get themselves rich. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. That answer proves again that he's not worth the cost or the corruption. We know 
that after eight years of this prime minister, the cost of everything has gone up, in part because he's given away money for nothing. In a Rive scam, an app that was supposed to cost 80000 was actually how much? $60 million, at least, and counting, because the Auditor General says she doesn't have the documentation to do the full calculation. Today, though, we have a common-sense Conservative motion that require the Prime Minister release the full cost of the app and recover the money for Canadians within the next 100 days. Will he vote for that common-sense motion, yes or no? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, we see the Leader of the Opposition choosing to fling mud on a question that I've said. It's unacceptable. The authorities are looking into it. But he doesn't want to talk about the housing investments that we're making across the country. He doesn't want to talk about the fact that he voted against dental care that seniors are going to be benefiting of uh, from as of May. He doesn't want to talk about child care. He doesn't want to talk about Ukraine. He doesn't want to talk about all the things where Conservatives are out of line with Canadians. We're going to continue focusing on the things that matter to Canadians. Canadians every single day. The Honourable Member for Belle Chambly. Mr. Speaker, this government, with the NDP, wants to bring in Medicare, but that won't give anything additional to Quebec, which already covers drugs and which was an inspiration for the federal government. That would be okay with me as long as Quebec has a right to withdraw with full compensation and with no strings attached. The member for Rosemont Patrie, a member of that alliance, said, yes, Quebec will be able to withdraw, but the minister doesn't seem to agree. Who's telling the truth? The right honorable prime minister. Mr. Speaker, the reality is that there are still too many Canadians throughout the country who are facing impossible choices. They're having to decide between paying for groceries or medication that they need. We will be there to ensure that people throughout the country can pay for medication. We will work with the provinces, including Quebec, to ensure that we cover the medications Canadians need. The Honourable Member. I agree that many Canadians may not have that service, but Quebecers, yes, they do. That's why we want to be able to withdraw with full compensation. Shouldn't the Liberals and NDP have, have gotten their stories aligned before speaking publicly? They don't, the left hand doesn't seem to know what the right hand is doing. The Prime Minister has given us such a clear answer. So, as my friend with, for Richmond, Arthur Baskin, would say, yes or no, will Quebec be able to withdraw with full compensation? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, throughout the country, including in Quebec, people are facing gaps in their Medicare. That's why we will be there to work closely with the provinces, hand in hand, to ensure that people can pay for their medication throughout the country. We will always be there to work constructively with the provinces, always with the goal of offering coverage to all Canadians. Member from Burnaby South. You Democrats have long said that corporate greed is driving up the cost of living. It's also hurting our health care system. Galen Weston's, lob Galen Weston's Shoppers Drug Mart, which the corporate control conservatives love, uh, is now ripping off our health care system. That means more money in the pockets of Galen Weston and less money for frontline health care workers. Yeah. Why does the Prime Minister continue to let Galen Weston get richer while Canadians can't get the health care that they need? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I'll let the Leader of the Opposition answer to why he has a high-profile lobbyist sitting within his caucus meetings uh, for Galen Weston. Uh, we're focused on creating com more competition for lower prices, more choice and more innovative products and services for Canadians. Our government recently passed new legislation that empowers the Competition Bureau to hold grocers accountable and prioritize consumers' interests. The fall economic statement also cracks down on predatory pricing, and I urge all parties to vote in favour. To choose between both parties controlled by, cons by corporations. Monsieur le Président, le Premier ministre a accordé... Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister gave more than $4 billion to the North Vault factory, which is a project with severe environmental risks 
and no economic benefits before 2037, before committing to spending so much money, did the Prime Minister have environmental assessments carried out? Or did he just listen to his CEO friends, the Right Honourable Prime Minister? Mr. Speaker, this is the largest private investment in the history of Quebec. This is a company that is not only creating jobs, but also the products of the future. We will have to continue fighting climate change and protect our environment. We are doing that hand in hand with the government of Quebec, hand in hand with companies like Northvolt, where they are building careers, our future, and the fight against climate change all at once. I expect that the NDP will understand that building a strong economy and a future for our environment go together. To ax the tax, this prime minister wants to hike the tax. First of all, he wants to quadruple it between now and 2030. And on April first, he plans to hike it by 23 percent with the support of the NDP. The tax hike will be bigger than any increases in the rebate, and therefore people will have be bigger, the average families in all the provinces will be bigger net losers under this tax than they were before. With Canadians unable to eat, heat, and house themselves, will the Prime Minister cancel his plan to hike the tax on April 1st? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. I do believe this might be one of the first times the Leader of the Opposition has ever recognized that there is a Canada carbon rebate that he is going to cancel. Checks that he will prevent from delivering to Canadians right across the country. Eight out of ten Canadians get more households get more money uh, than they pay in carbon pricing in the provinces in which they apply. In Alberta, $1,800 a year to the fa a family of four, $1,200 a year in Manitoba, even in Ontario, uh, $1,120 uh, to a family of four in Ontario. That's money in their pockets that he wants to take away. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Well, I'm glad he mentioned his phony rebates because $1,800 in Alberta is the rebate. That's what he said. You heard him. Here's the gross cost, $2,943. Oh. So he's going to take That's away $2,943, but give back $1,800 oh. and then ask you to be thankful for it, Mr. <laughs> Speaker. Isn't that just proof that the carbon tax is just like him, not worth the cost? Yeah. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. The parliamentary budget officer himself recognized that the $1,800 in rebate that we're sending, for example, to a family of four in Alberta is more than that family of four costs uh, with the price on pollution. That is uh, the calculation that is done right across the country that shows that eight out of ten families are better off with the Canada carbon rebate than they pay in the price of pollution in areas in which uh, it's brought in. We are both fighting climate change and delivering more money to households across the country, money that he wants to take away. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Speaker, the Parliamentary Budget Officer report is in my hands. Page 3 of a distributional analysis of the federal fuel charge under the 2030 Emissions Reduction Plan. Google it. Look it up. It's on the Parliamentary Budget Officer's website. You don't have to believe me, and you certainly don't want to believe him. <laughs> Go look for yourself. The average Ontario family will pay $1,674 in carbon taxes next year. That's $630 more than they get back in rebates. So why doesn't the Prime Minister Google it, look up the report, check the facts, and ax the tax? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker. Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the first conclusion of the Parliamentary Budget Officer is in the math, on the face of it, eight out of ten families get more back through the price on pollution uh, through the Canada carbon rebate. The reality 
reality is, if one talk, wants to talk about longer term and broader economic consequences of a price on pollution, you have to talk about the cost of inaction. You have to talk about the benefits of investing and innovating in carbon reduction technologies. That's the full picture that the leader of the opposition doesn't want to look at because he doesn't think you can build a strong economy and fight climate change at the same time. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, he's doing neither yeah, at the same right. time. Mr. Speaker, the parliamentary budget, he, first of all, I, I should catch that word he said, on the face of it. <laughs> <laughs> The tax is terrific. Well, the parliamentary budget officer actually did the calculation of the full fiscal and economic cost for the average family. And he found, and he found, and he found that every family in the middle class is worse off under the carbon tax. For example, in Ontario, the net cost for the average family above and beyond rebates is $627 this year. How are they going to pay for that? Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, families in Ontario are going to be getting a Canada carbon rebate worth $1,120 this year. Uh, that's an, a family of four. A family in Nova Scotia, $824. A family in Saskatchewan, $1,500 this coming year. And that is uh, more. Uh, for eight out of ten families uh, than the price on pollution actually is. We are fighting climate change, we are innovating and creating jobs of tomorrow, and we're putting more money in the pockets of Canadians, checks that that leader of the opposition would take away. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, uh, here's a very simple way to measure it up. Right here from the Parliamentary Budget Officer's report. The total gross cost of the carbon tax in Ontario is $1,674 for this coming year. $1,674. $1,674. $1,674. How much is the rebate? <laughs> with record-setting wildfires last year, with floods, uh, with, with uh, climate... Uh, Good suggestion, the Honourable Prime Minister from the top. Mr. Speaker, with record-setting wildfires across the country, with droughts, with floods, Canadians know the costs of the impacts of climate change. The Leader of the Opposition has no plan to fight climate change. He's not proposing anything except, Mr. Speaker, to pull away both the price on pollution, which forces polluters uh, to pay right across the country, that puts more money through checks that arrive four times a year in Canadians' pockets in where in the in the jurisdictions where there is a carbon price. We have a plan to fight climate change and put money in people's pockets. He has no plan. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Whoa, I don't need to, he doesn't need to get angry about it. <laughs> <laughs> He's asking some numbers here. Just some numbers. Right? So he was very anxious to talk about these wonderful rebates up until a moment ago. And now he doesn't want to say a thing about it. He even gave him a fancy new name. I'm going to say it again. In Ontario, the gross cost of the carbon tax is $1,674 for the average family. $1,674. How much is the rebate? Just the, number. the Right Honourable Prime Minister. He suggests that I don't have to get angry about climate change. I'm sorry, Mr. Speaker. Canadians are worried and angry about climate change. They see the wildfires cutting across this country last summer that are already started up uh, in Alberta. He sees the droughts. They see the floods. They have no plan. Their plan is to withdraw the, uh, the, the four times a year checks that land in the bank accounts of Canadians, that the Parliamentary Budget Officer uh, demonstrates uh, gives more money to eight out of ten families right across the country in jurisdictions where it's applied. Mr. Speaker, we have a plan. He doesn't. The Honourable Member for Belleuil Chambly. There was a unanimous vote at committee to support the bill brought forward by my colleague for Shefford.
to finally end discrimination towards seniors. The discrimination in old age security between, pe between people of 65 to 75 and those over 75. Since it was unanimous vote, I assume the Liberal members were directed to vote in favor. So logically, this should be part of the budget. My question is the following. Will the end of this age-related discrimination be in the budget? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, on seniors, we have taken measures to recognize seniors with higher costs. Those over 75, we are giving them more help. In addition, we are providing dental care to seniors. This week, seniors of 70 and over will be able to register for receiving dental care starting in May. We are here to help seniors. We are here to invest and help the most vulnerable among us. We will continue to be there for our seniors throughout the country. The Honourable Member for belle chambly That's all very well, Mr. Speaker, but that's in the past. I want to know what the Prime Minister will do in the future. And I would remind him that his members at committee voted in favour of this bill. And it's going to be coming to the floor of the House. So I'm assuming that the Prime Minister is not trying to fool us or fool the people who are the most vulnerable during the pandemic and now, and the most vulnerable to inflation. Will he finally put an end to this age-based discrimination between seniors? And will he increase old age security for all seniors in the budget? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, since 2015, we have increased GIS and OIS. And we have recognized that, indeed, seniors are facing a difficult time, especially older seniors from 75 years of age. There are more costs for vulnerable seniors, and that is why we are helping them with targeted assistance, while also helping all seniors with investment in housing, in dental care, in the New Horizons program, with investments throughout the country to help seniors. And we will always recognize those who are the most vulnerable. The NDP Liberal Prime Minister is not worth the cost of food. As we were reminded by a tragic report by Second Harvest that came out this week showing that they will be, there will be an, another million extra visits to food banks above last year's record-breaking numbers. Wow. This because of the collusion of the NDP Liberals on uh, price fixing, that is the carbon tax. Will the Prime Minister cancel his April 1st 23 percent carbon tax hike on food? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, as one of the Conservative leaders' own MPs recognized, there is absolutely no data or proof to link uh, their theory around the price on pollution and, uh, and uh, the price of groceries. But if they actually cared about affordability for Canadians, they would have voted in favour of uh, dental care for our most vulnerable seniors, for uh, young families uh, that can't afford to send their kids to the dentist. That's what we are delivering. They are voting against. They they wouldn't be stalling on the competition reforms, uh, reforms to ensure that we're actually moving forward on greater competition to stabilize grocery prices. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, after eight years, this NDP Liberal Prime Minister is just not worth the cost of food. It's not just that uh, two million people a month can't afford groceries and are forced to line up at food banks. It's just now that those food banks are running out of food and Canadians are diving into dumpsters. Literally, there's an 8,000-member Facebook group called the Dumpster Diving Network. Shame. How can the Prime Minister look those people in the eyes and raise taxes on their food when they're eating out of garbage cans? Yeah. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, we recognize that many Canadians are facing extremely difficult times, which is why we're continuing to step up our supports across the country uh, for food banks, uh, for, uh, for programs, uh, and for supports for vulnerable Canadians. This is something that we have taken seriously and we will continue to. At the same time, Mr. Speaker, we're continuing to move forward on concrete measures to help Canadians, like dental care, like pharma care, like child care. These are things that the Conservative Party continues to vote against uh, in terms 
of helping vulnerable Canadians in helping with affordability. He's there to instrumentalize vulnerable Canadians and try and play politics off of them. He's not there. The, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, that's the best answer he can come up with after eight years of record food price increases that has forced people not just to food banks, but to literally jump into dumpsters and bring their phones that they can network on Facebook to share tips on how to eat out of garbage cans in Canada. Life was not like this before this Prime Minister, and it won't be like this after he's gone. In the meantime, we'll at least have the humanity to cancel his April 1st 23% tax hike. Yeah. Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, farmers across this country know the impacts of climate change on uh, the food supply in Canada, on the growing and production of food. Uh, these are things uh, that we are fighting against by fighting against climate change and putting more money in the pockets of Canadians right across the country. We will continue to be there uh, with support for food banks. We will continue to be there with support for vulnerable Canadians. Now, the Leader of the Opposition loves to talk about uh, them and try and score political points off of these vulnerable people, but he is offering no real solutions for them as we continue to step up and deliver supports for people from coast to coast to coast. Here, here. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Selon l'organisme... According to the Second Harvest Organization, there have been an additional one million visits, or there will be one million additional visits this year due to food inflation. These additional visits to food banks have been caused by the Prime Minister. According to some experts, the Prime Minister should at least freeze the carbon tax, but the Bloc Québécois has voted to radically increase the taxes on the farmers who produce our food. Will the Prime Minister ignore the Bloc Québécois for once, cancel the costly coalition, and axe the tax on food? The Right Honourable Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker, no party in this House needs to be preached to by the Conservative Party when it comes to helping vulnerable people, because the Conservative Party just wants to lower taxes on the wealthy, help out well-heeled people, and not support vulnerable Canadians, whether with food banks, dental care, child care, seniors. We know that the Conservatives only have austerity and cuts to offer. We will continue to be there for people and fight climate change. Member from Nunavut. Northerners continue to experience the worst housing crisis in the country. Overcrowding is so bad that families sleep in shifts. One home has cr was cracking in half from the melting permafrost and only held together by duct tape. This cannot continue. For years, this government has ignored the territorial's call for investments to housing. They need the housing funding now. Will this prime minister respect? the territorial governments and deliver the funding they need to build homes. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. For the question and for the work that the uh, Honourable Member does uh, to speak up for people in the North, uh, we are always going to be there to invest in housing, to work hand in hand uh, with Premier Ahiagok and others uh, to make sure we are delivering for people in a situation that is extremely difficult for them. We recognize these challenges, which is why we've sent millions and millions of dollars to the territories for building of new housing, and we will continue to be there with even more. The Honourable Member from Nanaimo, Lady Smith. Mr. Speaker, sky-high food prices are driving people to food banks. This didn't happen overnight. It's because consecutive Liberal and Conservative governments put the profits of rich grocery CEOs before people. Visits to Nanaimo's Loaves and Fishes food bank is up 44 per cent in just six months. Loaves and Fishes is beyond capacity and requires federal funding in building a distribution centre to keep up with demand. 
Mr. Speaker, will the Prime Minister provide this funding so that people on Vancouver Island are not left to go hungry? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we have stepped up our supports as a federal government to food banks and uh, organizations serving the most vulnerable right across the country, and we will continue to. Uh, on terms of grocery prices, more, more competition means lower prices, more choice, and more innovative products and services for Canadians. So we're going to continue uh, to work on our new uh, legislation that empowers the Competition Bureau to hold grocers accountable and prioritize consumers' interests. There is much more to do, and we're going to continue to do it, working alongside anyone in this house, house who wants to tackle affordability and ensure that we're helping the most vulnerable across the country. The Honourable Member from Mississauga East Cooksville. Mr. Speaker, I've heard loud and clear from unionized workers in my riding about how excited they are about the government's bill to ban the use of replacement workers in federally regulated workplaces. Yesterday marked another significant step in the right direction as Bill C-58 received unanimous support in this House. Workers know that our Liberal government stands with them because the best deals and the most powerful paychecks are made at the bargaining table. Will the Prime Minister update this House on progress on this historic legislation to ban replacement workers? Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I thank the member from Mississauga East Cooksville for his continued advocacy for Canadian workers. Indeed, the best deals are made at the bargaining table, but when Canadian workers see Conservative politicians like the members for battle Ford's Lloyd Minister, Sherwood Park, Fort Saskatchewan, and Louis Saint Laurent parrot corporate talking points. They know that the Conservative Party of anti-union bills C-377 and 525 is still alive and kicking. Canadians won't be fooled by this Conservative leader caving to pressure after a steady 19-year political career opposing unions. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Tax the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. Meanwhile, this Prime Minister has doubled housing costs since he promised to bring them down. A National Bank report out Thursday revealed that in Victoria and Toronto, it now takes an astonishing 25 years for the average family to save for a down payment. And in Vancouver, it's 29 years. This after he's created $80 billion of new housing spending that has been vaporized by bureaucracy. Right. So will he finally follow our common sense plan to cut the bureaucracy and build the homes? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, we just announced two more housing accelerator agreements today in Whitehorse and Saskatoon, adding to the dozens of agreements we've signed across the country to fast-track fast the construction of housing with over 600,000 homes. Now, the Conservatives' Party plan, which he's talking about, is to insult mayors and cut critical infrastructure funding, and it won't get any more homes built. Cities understand that we need to change the rules to get more homes built faster and indeed the only one gatekeeping this progress is the conservative leader himself yes, the honorable leader of the opposition he pretends he hasn't been in government for the last eight years he, he acts like this is his first day on the job mr speaker in fact that he has to read off notes would suggest it is his first day on the job but the reality is that housing costs have doubled since he promised to lower them. Yes, he's created massive programs with wonderful new agreements and beautiful photo ops where politicians pat each other on the back and smile while they cut ribbons. The problem is that after eight years, nothing is getting built. Why won't the Prime Minister get out of the way, cut the bureaucracy, so we can build the homes? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, 19 years as a politician, the Leader of the Opposition, including some time as a Housing Minister, and his plan to fix housing is anything but a plan. It won't build homes fast enough, it doesn't reach enough cities, and it creates unnecessary bureaucracy. He'd also, get this, rip up the Housing Accelerator Agreements, which are unlocking over 600,000 new homes, and he'd put the GST back on apartment construction. Housing experts like Mike Moffat say the Conservative leader's plan is exceptionally weak, and it's a sign that the Conservatives don't understand the urgency or scale of the housing crisis. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. He brags that there's a housing crisis <laughs> after he's been in power for eight long years. He quotes the same failed liberal academics that gave him the advice that helped him double the price in the first place. Our common sense plan 
will incentivize cities to speed up and lower the cost of building by requiring they permit 15 percent more homes as a condition of getting the money. The more they build, the more they get. The less they build, the less they get. We pay builders based on the number of homes they build. Realtors on the number that they sell, we should pay municipalities based on the number they permit. Isn't that common sense? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, slogans and buzzwords don't get housing built. Deals, constructive deals with, with municipalities and provinces do. And Mr. Speaker, we see time and time again, Conservatives have nothing to propose but cuts, conditions and fights with municipalities, fights with community organizations, uh, crossing their arms, their arms and tossing insults at people instead of actually proposing real plans. We are busy working on delivering hundreds of thousands of new homes over over the coming years. This is the work that needs to get done. Uh, the leader should, the Conservative leader just needs to get out of the way. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. This just goes to show again that he is not worth the cost of housing. He says that we're going to build homes. Well, he's been Prime Minister for eight years. And what's the result? Well, he has doubled the cost of housing. In fact, rent has tripled in Montreal in the past eight years. What's my common sense plan? Well, I'm going to give municipalities bonuses if they build more and penalties if they build less. That's common sense. Will he finally follow our plan to cut the bureaucracy and build the homes? The Right Honourable Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker, the Conservative leader, what he has to offer is cuts, austerity and squabbles. He's picking fights with NGOs, with municipalities all over the country. We, however, want to work hand in hand with municipalities, with provinces, with NGOs and not-for-profits to bring down rent prices, to build more housing units and to create more opportunities for young people and families to build, to buy their homes. We have a plan. We're delivering results. All he has to offer is cuts, fights and austerity. The Honourable Member for Belle Chambly. The government is dealing with one of the worst financial scandals in the history of the public service, somewhere in the uh, public service. This is the worst uh, scandal since the sponsorship scandal. Now, we have four clear requests. First, we want the Prime Minister to acknowledge his responsibility. Second, we want him to implement an independent inquiry. Third, we want him to recover the money. Get the money back, for heaven's sake. And fourth, we want this massive error to be fixed. So let's start with the first request. Does the Prime Minister admit that he, as Prime Minister, should be held to account for Quebecers and for Canadians? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Well, Mr. Speaker, of course this situation is unacceptable. That's why authorities are following up and investigating this procurement situation, which obviously did not go as planned. Anyone who profited unduly on the actions of a government which was focused on saving lives during COVID-19, anyone who profited from our government to make personal profits should face consequences. We are allowing authorities to investigate as needed. The Honourable Member for belle chambly Well, we agree on something. It's unacceptable. The Prime Minister is responsible for something which is unacceptable. So he should take just a bit of action, shouldn't he? Next, what will he do to recover the tens of millions of misspent taxpayer dollars? For example, the CBSA, will he put them under guardianship? Will he instigate an inquiry? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, as I said, we do agree that this situation is unacceptable. That's why authorities are currently following up on the contracting processes. Authorities are also looking at all years during which individuals who work for these companies may have profited from procure government procurement contracts. So of course we need to take this seriously, and of course authorities are taking this seriously. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Well, Mr. Speaker, 
we need we where we need to wonder what the Bloc Québécois leader was thinking when the Prime Minister asked him for twenty four million dollars for an application that was supposed to cost eighty thousand dollars, and the Bloc leader. He said, yes, absolutely, no matter the cost, we will vote in favor of it for millions. And the government house leader of the Bloc Québécois, in fact, said, it's not the Bloc Québécois' job to scrutinize all government spending. We support the government and we tell them to go ahead. So what is the Bloc even good for? The Prime Minister is rising to answer the question, but I would like to remind members that it's important that questions during question period relate to the administration of government or committee business. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. The leader of the Conservative Party asked me what the bloc is good for. I find that that question is hurtful to Quebecers. Even if I may disagree with the Bloc Québécois and their desire to constantly pick fights, the Bloc Québécois was elected by Quebecers. Those Bloc Québécois members of Parliament sit in this House and they do their jobs. The party across the way disrespects Quebecers. They disrespect mayors in Quebec. On this side of the House, we have work to do and we're doing it. Lord, uh, Lord, uh, the, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Well, this is really something. There is a marriage here in this House of the Liberals and the Bloc Party. The Prime Minister compliments the Bloc, the Bloc applauds, then the, the Bloc votes to support more money for our arrive scam, the Bloc votes to drastically increase taxes along with this Prime Minister, the Bloc votes for these housing policies that have doubled the cost of housing for Quebecers. The Bloc is constantly voting with the Prime Minister to release dangerous criminals on parole. This Liberal Bloc marriage, what's it doing? What's it good for? The, the Right Honourable Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker, it's very clear, once again, that the Conservative Party disrespects Quebecers. Not only do they disrespect Quebecers, but they also disrespect democracy. Mr. Speaker, I have spent my entire political career fighting for federalism in Quebec and fighting for a united Quebec. Often that has involved being against the Bloc Québécois, but I have always respected Bloc Québécois members. I respect anyone who, is a, uh, who runs to represent uh, constituents and who represents them here. The Conservatives' disregard for democracy and for Quebecers should be of concern to all Quebecers and to all Canadians. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, I just keep asking the same question, and it's the same question that the Premier of Quebec asked. Francois Legault asked this question. He asked, what does it do to vote bloc? Well, we know what it does. We know what it's good for. It's good for the Prime Minister. The Bloc Québécois votes with the Prime Minister. They voted with him to drastically increase taxes on carbon and diesel. They voted with the Prime Minister to ban hunting rifles in the regions of Quebec. The Bloc is voting to release criminals and increase waves of crime on our streets. So when you vote Bloc, what you're really doing is supporting the Prime Minister. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker. Once again, what I hear is contempt, disrespect and contempt for Quebecers and for democracy. What I didn't hear, though, was a question. The Honourable Member for Dorval, Lachine Lassalle. Mr. Speaker, protecting children is a priority for our government. On Monday, we introduced our online harms legislation. But before even having a chance to see the legislation, the Conservatives declared that they would oppose this protection. What's even more surprising is that the Conservatives want Canadians to provide their personal information to questionable websites. Can the Prime Minister explain to Canadian families how our online harms legislation will protect their children? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I thank the member for Dorval, Lachine Lassalle, for her important question. We are working tirelessly to fight the real consequences of online harms. These consequences are very real and sometimes tragic. 
How are we doing this? We are ensuring that social media platforms follow their own safety policies. The Conservative leader's plan, though, is to impose a digital identity card on Canadians. He wants Canadians to give their personal information and data to these shady websites. Canadians, and especially Canadian children, deserve to be safe in all aspects of their lives, including online. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. The Prime Minister is not worth the cost. He's not worth the cost of all the products. He increased an energy tax with the support of the Bloc. He has increased taxes on paychecks, once again, with Bloc support. He has increased inflationary spending, always with the support of the Bloc. The Bloc votes for all of his discretionary spending. Now, the Prime Minister wants to hike taxes on beer, on wine, and on all other types of alcohol. He wants to hike these taxes on these products on April 1st. You know, after all these Prime Minister's taxes, what Canadians need is a drink. Will he cancel these taxes? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker. It's very apparent, yet again, that the leader of the Conservative Party is looking to pick fights. We are here to invest to help vulnerable Canadians through dental care, through daycare spots. We are here to invest in seniors as well, to protect their pensions. He, though, wants to attack and cut pensions. We are here to help Canadians. Across the line, we will always be here to protect the most vulnerable. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Tax, build the homes, fix the budget and stop the crime. Meanwhile, the NDP Liberal Prime Minister has raised taxes on gas, heat and groceries, raised taxes on paychecks, raised income taxes on middle class and lower income Canadians, raised taxes on small businesses. He keeps raising taxes. It's enough to drive a man to drink, yep. but he wants to tax that too. Yep. On April 1st, another 5% increase on beer, wine and spirits that will kill jobs for those workers and raise costs on consumers. Will he have the humanity to let someone have a drink in peace? The, on the, sorry, the Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, while the Conservative leader continues to figure out uh, catchy slogans and buzzwords, we're rolling up our sleeves to deliver for Canadians more housing, dental care, supports for seniors, uh, supports for young families, fighting against climate change while putting more money in their pockets. Uh, we are doing the hard work of delivering for Canadians while he proposes nothing but cuts to programs, austerity and catchy slogans. Mr. Speaker, uh, we need continued responsible approach to government and that's exactly what we are delivering. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. After reports that the RCMP had to intervene at the Winnipeg labs due to a security breach and great speculation, public speculation of espionage by foreign dictatorship at that Canadian lab, the Prime Minister fought tooth and nail for any of the documents to come out, including by d defying a motion of this House. We found out from a letter written by all parties that had seen the documents, including a Liberal MP, that this was to cover up embarrassment, not protect national security. What did the Prime Minister have to hide? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Your ministers will be tabling the, process resu the uh, documents resulting from this process after question period. But I will note, Mr. Speaker, in this uh, question period, uh, following the two-year anniversary of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the Leader of the Opposition had nothing to say about this war raging in Ukraine, nothing to say to Ukrainian Canadians. Uh, as Canada signed security assurances guaranteeing Ukraine support to Ukraine for the next 10 years, he demonstrates once again he is non-committal in his support towards Ukraine, in his support towards Ukrainians. Mr. Speaker, it's shameful that the Leader of the Opposition won't talk about it. The Honourable Member for Halifax West. Speaker, the lobster industry is a crucial part of the economy of the Atlantic provinces. Last week, Conservative MPs from Ontario and Alberta saw fit to shockingly attack this industry, the economy of our region, and by definition, the women and men who make the industry thrive. 
Can the Prime Minister tell fishers from my region why, contrary to the opposition, we will always promote this important industry abroad? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, I thank the member for Halifax West for her advocacy on behalf of Atlantic Canadians. On this side of the House, we are proud that Canadian lobster is being exported around the world, bringing $2.6 billion to our economy and supporting the livelihoods of communities across the Atlantic. But last week, Conservative leadership demonstrated that they don't care to understand the economic importance of this industry for our East Coast. Atlantic Conservative MPs who stand with their constituents should demand an apology from their leader and their deputy leader for the disdain they showed towards hardworking Atlantic The Honourable Member from Skeena Bulkley Valley. Mr. Speaker, people across Northwest BC are deeply concerned about the ongoing drought. Last summer saw record wildfires across Canada. Farmers couldn't get their crops. Wild salmon were stranded on their way to spawn. And right now, with very little snow in the mountains, next summer could look even worse. But while the Conservatives remain silent around the harsh impacts of climate change, the Liberals appear to be satisfied with business as usual. So my question is there a concerted national plan to address the droughts and wildfires we expect this summer? And if there is, what is it? Here, here. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, uh, last year was one of the worst wildfire seasons on record. We saw droughts, we saw floods. We know the impact of climate change is real right across the country, something the Conservative Party continues to deny. Uh, the reality is our uh, leaders, uh, our, our uh, Minister of Emergency Preparedness, uh, was there uh, to engage with uh, ministers across the It is important not to be disruptive in the House or to cause disorder in the House. This applies to all members from all sides. I encourage you, please, to conduct yourselves accordingly to allow questions to be asked and for answers to be given. The Right Honourable Prime Minister from the top, please. Mr. Speaker, Conservative MPs just demonstrated their complete lack of respect for their constituents who face the direct impacts of climate change in floods, wildfires, droughts right across the country. The fact is they have no solutions, no plan to deal with it. Our Minister of Emergency Preparedness has already engaged uh, with partners across the country uh, in provision of uh, what may be uh, a very bad season for climate impacts and for wildfires. Uh, that's why we're going to continue to fight against climate change while we grow the economy and be there to support Canadians from coast to coast to coast, something Conservatives have no plan for. The Honourable Member from Saanich Gulf Islands. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and to the Prime Minister, who's so concerned about the wildfires, the zombie fires still under the snow. The wildfire season has already started, and yet, quietly, on Friday, February 16th, Environment Canada posted extension to consultation on clean electricity regulations. The David Suzuki Foundation has posted a warning. Does this mean more delay? Does this mean clean electricity regulations are to be weakened? Can the Prime Minister assure all Canadians that we have more than rhetoric to throw? at the wildfires in this country. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. 
Speaker, following consultations that started in August of 2023, we recently released updated, an updated draft of the Clean Electricity Regulations. A net zero grid will serve as the basis for climate actions across the economy, like helping Canadians switch from electric, to electric transportation and heating. Our government is committed to working closely with all provinces, territories and partners on delivering the benefits of a clean grid in a way that ensures reliability and affordability for all Canadians. And thus brings to an end uh, a question period. I recognize the Honourable Minister of Health rising on a point of order.